Hey everybody! In this video, I'm going to show you how to use your dyes as stencils and just as no line watercolor elements on your cards and put those two things together. Now, I like to leave my dies all connected together when I get them, if possible, if they're not nested. Because you can do all sorts of fun things like use them in your MISTI to get perfect placement of stamping, etc. And I always just pop that negative space into my stamp pocket and keep it with it. So in this case, I'm using the negative die cut where I cut all of these elements out of watercolor paper. I'm using the negative space as a stencil, which is easy to do with any die. And I'm taking some wet cement ink and using a Hero Arts blender brush. And I'm creating a background for the watercolor die cuts that I'll be putting on the front. So this would be like a landscape scene where off in the distance you'd see something that wasn't as clear as what you see in the foreground. And that is the look that I'm trying to create. So I'm choosing different elements similar to the ones that I cut out of watercolor paper and just ink blending those in the background. Now you can reuse these post-it notes over and over again. And you can also just stick those in your stamp pocket with your homemade stencil as well. This is a great color because it's kind of a warm gray. And so it's going to mimic the way that the stems of my mushrooms look when I'm finished. So I was sort of trying to focus on the mushrooms here because that's one of my favorite images. There have been several Hero Art sets with mushrooms, and they just speak to my inner hippie from the 70s, and I love using these. But that warm tone, as opposed to like charcoal or one of the other sort of neutral tones, I like this warm tone for the scene with the mushrooms and the ferns. And you can do these shadows in different colors if you like. I decided to stick with all one color for my background because my foreground is going to be very colorful as you'll see. So I'm using Daniel Smith watercolor and I will be watercoloring these beautiful dyes. They have all of this textural detail in the dyes. So you can see on the mushrooms that the little spots are actually cut into the dye. So like our paper layering dies that have that die cut detail, these have quite a bit of detail in addition to the color that I'm giving them. So for that reason, I'm not doing any kind of detailed watercoloring. You can see I'm just quickly covering these with color. I'm not doing a ton of shading. It's really not necessary on the type of scene that I'm building. I wanted all of the mushrooms and the ferns to have sort of fanciful maybe not very realistic colors so that it looks like a little fairy forest. And I just love that entire theme. So all of the themed elements that came out with this release that have like that fairy garden element to them, I just love that so much. It's so much fun. And it actually has inspired me to want to put a fairy garden out in my own garden. I do love to garden and I think it would be fun for all of the people that deliver to us to maybe see a little fairy garden up against one of my trees as they come up to the door. So since it's been a year of delivery, <laughs> uh, I try to entertain them and reward them in any way possible. So I thought that that would be fun. So if any of you have any ideas on fun fairy garden elements, I am all ears. All ears. So the little yellow, they look like fiddlehead ferns to me. Those are real standouts in this scene. The rest of the colors are quite a bit darker. And so I wanted to have a bright element that stands out against the shadow in the background and some of the darker colors that are going to be in the foreground. Now to make that mushroomy brown, you might have to mix a couple of colors. That's what I did here. I mixed a grayish purple with the yellow to give me that color that I think of when I see 
mushrooms and I cook with a lot of mushrooms so I know that color pretty well it's ingrained in my brain and I knew what I wanted but sometimes you're going to have to mix your watercolors to get exactly what you want so that's what I did here each of the stems of the mushrooms even these teeny weeny little delicate mushrooms that I love there are mushrooms just like this in my yard as a matter of fact with delicate little caps really fun but even those will have the same color as the larger mushrooms do, just for simplicity's sake. And I had to throw one purple mushroom in there for Libby. You might see the little Easter eggs that everybody on the creative team throws in every now and then for our fearless leader, Libby. We love to throw a little purple her way whenever we can. So now I will arrange these against my stenciled background just being careful to make sure that what's in the background stays visible behind these die cut elements so i'm just sort of arranging these very carefully and then i'm going to perform a magic trick to keep them all in place you may have seen this magic trick before but you're going to see it again and it's pretty darn cool so now that that's all set up, my magic wand is press and seal. So just take a piece of press and seal. And you'll want to make sure that after you put the press and seal on, that you really press it down really well. That's going to make sure that all the die cut elements stay together when you remove the cardstock like I did. So be sure and give it that little extra TLC at the end and they will all stick to the press and seal and you'll be able to remove your card front easily and without pulling up any of the die cuts then all you have to do is apply glue to the back or your adhesive of choice i recommend glue just because the motion of putting a tape runner on there might dislodge some of the die cuts so my preferred method is glue and just make sure there's a little bit of glue on every piece and then you'll be transferring it all at once to your scene and it'll be exactly as you designed it and laid it out, which is super fun. So once that's all set, just put your little scene down, flip over the press and seal, line up the elements where you want them, and just press them down. See, it's like magic. I told you. So once you have that all set, don't worry about the ones that are hanging off the edge. Those are going to be super easy to trim off. But we will just make sure that they're all adhered really, really well. This glue dries really fast. But if you're using a slower drying glue, just make sure that you wait the right amount of time before you remove that press and seal doesn't that look cute and it's like a one step thing to put down you know 10 die cuts amazing saving time so that we can make more cards so i will trim these off this will get some glue on your scissors don't worry about that you can clean that off with a little undo or goo gone or that kind of thing so I will just make sure that those are all trimmed up. And look at that beautiful little scene. Isn't that magical? It's magical in every way. So here's the finished card. I turned it into a birthday card with another set that was released this month that's all listed down below. Head over to the blog for more information. And thanks so much for watching.